as part of the sustaining ecosystems topic, we have to choose either the Antarctic or the Arctic as an example of a polar ecosystem to study. And so we've chosen to study the Antarctic. This is the area that's got the South Pole. Within the Antarctic, we've needed to st study a case study of small scale sustainable management. A reminder of what sustainability means, it's about meeting the needs of today without compromising the needs of future generations to meet their needs. And so to be sustainable, something has to meet the needs of the environment, the economy and people's lives. In Antarctica, something that's been a concern is the increasing number of tourists visiting. So we're now somewhere over 40,000 tourists visiting each year. And obviously the concern is that this could um, start to spoil what has been up until then a truly pristine wilderness. So our example of small scale management of Antarctica was the White Desert uh, Sustainable Tourism Company. If you click on their website and go to the environment page, you can look in a lot more detail at all that they do to be managing the environment sustainably. To operate as a tourist company in Antarctica, you have to be part of the IAATO. And this is a association of Antarctic tour operators, and they will have rules which they expect any tour operator to follow. In fact, you have to make sure you're following these rules if you are to be part of this IAATO and to be allowed to take tours to Antarctica in the first place. Here's just some examples of IAATO rules that companies like White Desert will have to follow. So for example, there can only be 100 visitors ashore at any time from your particular tourist group. There's got to be a maximum of 20 visitors for every guide and so by having a guide they're going to be able to enforce the rules and make sure that the wildlife is kept safe and that tourists are uh, acting appropriately. When visiting a penguin colony, it's a minimum of five metres away from penguins that the tourists have to stay. Tourists have to keep to pathways that are separate from the penguin pathways whenever possible. Aircraft or flight activities have to be kept well away from penguin colonies so that the noise doesn't disturb them. So White Desert are part of the IAATO, but they've also gone a step further in trying to be truly sustainable in how they manage the environment. The first thing they did was try to ensure that they are truly carbon neutral. So what they do is they offset any carbon, for example, that might have been generated to their customers flying to Antarctica. And they do this by setting money aside to plant trees in other parts of the world and the idea is that those extra trees will absorb the carbon dioxide that would have been produced by the flight. They have an environmentally conscious supply chain so for example they're trying not to use any single-use plastics. Any waste that they produce is shipped off Antarctica to be recycled. They're using renewable energy as a way of heating and lighting their pods. They're pods, I'll show you in a minute, they're the accommodation for, for staying that the guests stay in when on Antarctica. And clearly using solar energy that's much more sustainable than fossil fuels. They're trying to build up their scientific research so that we can collect environmental information so we know how best to protect species such as the penguins in the future. The pods themselves at the Witchaway camp are designed to blend into the surroundings and again that's an attempt to be sustainable so that they're not an eyesore on the environment that might spoil the, the, the wilderness and, and, and scare wildlife. In terms of economically sustainable, well this company caters for people with lots of disposable income and so the high cost of these trips allows White Desert to have the money to be able to spend on making their trips sustainable by things like carbon offset. It also allows that money to be reinvested into protecting the wildlife. Despite all the different ways that 
white desert are attempting to be sustainable. You could argue that the biggest problem is the fact that their, their customers fly on aeroplanes, on small business jets to Antarctica. And so that's going to produce a huge amount of carbon, um, which then needs to be offset. And so although they are offsetting this carbon, you could argue that things would be far better off if they didn't go there in the first place. In summary, you can argue that there's several aspects of what White Desert do to sustainably manage Antarctica at a local level that are really successful. You can pause this slide to read through those. Equally, there are several things about what White Desert do that you could argue aren't very sustainable.